Keith Prince. Hey folks, welcome back to Keith Prince. Today I'm going to discuss the use of the Boolean modifier in Blender. This video is made in conjunction with my recently completed Kickstarter, Base Bashing Volume 1. I'm going to show you how to use the included templates and base cutters to make your own unique bases for 3D printing, though these techniques can be used for many other purposes as well. First off, we'll just start with 6 cubes so I can illustrate the 3 functions of the boolean modifier. Shift A to add, M for mesh, and C for cube. Shift D duplicates it and activates the move function on the duplicate, Y restricts that movement to the Y axis, slide it over a bit, and do it again. Select all three and press Shift D to duplicate again, Y to restrict them to the Y axis and move them over a bit, then G to grab and move, Z to move them up a bit, and then do it again, G to grab and move and X to move them forward. Now I select the three bottom ones and in the modifiers tab, add a boolean modifier. This will only add the modifier to the active object, the one highlighted in yellow. To copy it to the other two, I press Command L to link data, and P for copy modifiers. This will remove any modifiers on the orange highlighted objects, and replace them with the same ones that are on the active object. Now I select the center and left ones, and switch their modes to union and intersect respectively, and leave the right one on difference. Then for each, I click the eyedropper next to the object field, and select the appropriate duplicated cube. I then select the duplicated cubes and press H to hide it. The boolean modifier does not change the target object at all. It just uses its mesh data to manipulate the modified object. With them hidden, you can see the effects of the modifiers. Different on the right has cut the second cube out of the first. If I move it around, the cut out section stays in the same spot. For intersect on the left, if I move the cube, the area of intersection changes and the part left visible by the modifier also changes. The center one is just both put together. You can see if I enter edit mode that all three are still their original cube shape. To make it permanent, select apply from this little drop down menu or press command A with your mouse over the modifier tab. You can see now if I tab into edit mode that the underlying geometry is now what you see in object mode. Okay, moving on to bases and templates. First, you need to import your objects under File Import STL. I have Command Alt A set to its hotkey, which you can do for pretty much anything in Blender by right clicking on it. I quickly organize things a bit using G to grab and move, and X and Y or Shift Z to keep them on the same level. Then select them all, right click, and under Set Origin, I set Origin to Geometry. This will move their origins to the average position of each object's vertices, roughly centered, which makes rotating them later easier. I'll hide the cacti for now too, I'm going to add one of those at the end. And I'm going to turn on the cavity option in the overlays drop down menu. This makes details pop a little more. The object I've imported here is just a regular base. I'll provide cutters with the Kickstarter, but you could download any base from the internet or create your own and lightly modify it to be useful here. Using the tilde hotkey, the button above the escape key, I move to the front view, and then use it again and choose view selected. If ever you have trouble navigating the viewport in Blender, and you will, view selected is your best friend. If you box select the top row of vertices here, you'll see when I rotate that only the ones facing you are selected. If you press Shift Z, it switches to see-through mode, and you can box select again and get them all. Now I press E to extrude the selection. As they are all facing up, the movement will be automatically restricted to the Z axis. If you right click or press escape, the extruded vertices will revert to the position they started at. You can undo and try again, or as long as they're still selected, press G to grab and move them. They are not restricted to the Z axis now, which is what I want, so I press Z to activate it. You don't need to move them up too far, just far enough to cover any detail on the template. The meter units in Blender print out as millimeters. Next up, I find the detail I want to capture on the base. I press tilde and move to the top view, shift Z for see through, and place the base's geometry around the rocks I like. 
In the front view, I move the bass down some, pressing G and then Z. You can see this line is the top of the hollowed out underside and the darker part on the template is all the texture on top. What I do is move the base vertically so these two lines are even, then press G, Z, and negative 1 to move the base down 1mm. Now the thinnest part of texture will be 1mm thick. It looks like everything is lined up nicely. We are almost ready to boolean. Before we do though, I want to quickly cover a couple useful concepts that can mess up your boolean. Applying scale and recalculating normals. Scale first. Off to the side here, I will shift right click to place the 3D cursor. Shift A, M, C will add a cube in that spot. S, 5 and enter will scale it up 5 times. If you press N, it opens up the information panel on the right here. You can see that under scale, X, Y and Z are all 5. You can clear or apply these changes. To clear them, press Alt S. This returns the scale's values to 1, and the cube becomes smaller. If I scale it up again and press Command A for apply and select scale, you can see the values once again return to 1, but the cube stays the same size. Unapplied scale doesn't always affect your booleans, but I have found that it can, and definitely adds extra calculations to every vertice processed, which can be a lot. Next I will quickly modify this cube so it's more obvious what I'm doing. I tab into edit mode, press Command R to make a loop cut, 3 to switch to face mode, and select this one face and press E to extrude it up a bit. Well in edit mode, the overlays tab has an option to display normals for the vertices, edges and faces. Faces are what we are interested in, and if I slide this over it'll make them bigger so they're more visible. What normals are is the direction the face is pointing. You want them facing out. If I press A to select all, S to scale, X to restrict to the X axis, and then negative 1 and enter, it will flip the object on the X axis. You'll notice the normals are gone. Press Shift Z to see that they're all pointing inwards. With all the faces still selected, press Shift N to recalculate normals, and they are all pointing out again. Flip normals are a common problem with the Boolean modifier, and as long as your geometry isn't strange, easily fixed. I will often quickly apply scale and recalculate normals for anything I'm about to boolean, just to save potentially having to do it again. And also save your file. I always save my file before big booleans. It is really easy to accidentally select the wrong object, or one with weird geometry, that will then take forever to finish calculating. It's much easier to have the option of force quitting and reloading. Okay, time to boolean. Just like at the beginning of the video, with the base selected under the modifiers tab, add a new boolean modifier and set it to intersect. You can select the template with the eyedropper, or from the drop down menu, or the object list. I like to hide the template, so I select the target object with the eyedropper from the object list in the top right. And there we are, one custom base for your favorite mini. As for the cactus bits, you don't have to boolean them on, check out my last video for more details, but if you want to, it's the same process. Between the two cacti, I like the agave better, so I select the barrel cactus and press X to delete it. With the agave positioned properly, select the base, add a boolean modifier in the modifiers tab, and set it to union. I hide the agave, then reselect the base, and use the eyedropper to select the agave from the object list. It reappears as part of the base. If you move the base, the agave doesn't move though, so you have to apply it with command A, or from the drop down menu. Now, if you move it, or enter edit mode, you can see that the base has new geometry. And that's all for now. I'm thinking of making a video about how to easily create your own templates like these with free online resources. If that interests you, let me know in the comments. Check out my other channel for all the latest info on 3D printing Patreon and Kickstarter campaigns. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.